Thanks for that intro there. Uh, I'm going to be working out question number two from the 2015 level two algebra exam. And I've printed it off right here. And we're just going to start going through these questions as if I were a student and see how they go. All right, so question number one, or question number two, the first one of question number two, I should say, is a simplifying one. And anytime I simplify, it looks like I'm going to see if I can factorize first. And I look at that bottom one, and I can see that bottom one has a common factor of 2. So I'll factorize that out, and that gives me 2 brackets x squared minus 16. And I can see that that's a difference of 2 squares. So that's going to be 2x plus 4 times x minus 4. Now this top one takes some work here. And when I factorize these, I'm going to multiply these two numbers here. 2 times negative 4 equals negative 8. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get to negative 8 and add to get to positive 7. And that's how I'm going to rewrite that term. Okay, so I'll say 2x squared. Um, what do those numbers give me? I think it's I think it's positive 8x plus, no, not plus, positive 8x minus 1x. So these give me positive 7x, and they multiply to get to negative 8. So I'm going to split that 7x, 7x into those two terms. And I'm going to factorize by grouping here. Minus 1x minus 4. All right? Uh, so... Where am I going with this? Hopefully I can cross-cancel. So factorize by grouping means I'm going to look at these first two here and factorize out a 2x. 2x, and when I do that, I'm left with x plus 4. Now for this second bit here, I'm just going to factorize out a minus 1. That's the only thing they have in common is a, a negative, a minus 1. And when I do that, when I factorize that out, I'm left with x plus Four. Make that a little bit longer. Okay, so now this top one has a common factor of x plus 4, and I can rewrite it as x plus 4 times 2x minus 1. That's what that top one simplifies to. The common factor is a binomial this time instead of just an x. All over uh, 2 brackets x plus 4 times x minus 4, and you can see where I'm going with this because these common factors are going to cancel out. And I'm left with 2x minus 1 over 2 brackets x minus 4. Nothing else can cross-cancel. Nothing else can simplify here. I can expand that if I want to, but it's pretty much finished. All right, moving on to the next one. Uh, if a equals y to the power of 3 y to the power of 3 quarters, find an expression for a to the 7th in terms of y. Okay, well, what I did with this is I said, well, uh, a to the 7th means that I'm just going to take a and raise it to the 7th power, which means that I'm going to take this expression and raise it to the 7th power as well. And a power to a power is going to get multiplied, so that means a to the 7th equals y 3 quarters times 7 is 21 quarters. Okay, now, I mean, I, I guess this is finished here. Um, it, it didn't tell us what form they want us to write it in. Um, if, if they want us to write it in radical form, I could say um, a to the 7th equals, write the radical sign, put the y in there. 21 to the fourth root, either either one of these, I guess. So I'll I'll just take either one of these as the correct answer uh, because it doesn't say which form they want it in, index form or radical form. Okay, here's where we start getting into some real good algebra, and I'm just okay. This is called u substitution, and I know this because I've done videos like this before. And this is a quadratic in disguise. It's a quadratic in disguise. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal u to the power of one-third. And I'll show you why. Because if I do that, that becomes 7x, and this becomes 2x squared. <sighs> okay. So first of all, let's 
let's get a picture of this. Let's set this expression equal to zero first. So that's 2u to the power of 2 thirds plus 7u to the power of 1 third minus 4 equals 0. Okay. Now, when I do this substitution here, keep in mind, 2, two over 3 there, 2 thirds, is this squared. Okay? If I square this, I get 2 thirds. So this is going to become, using this substitution, 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals 0. Okay? So just, just remember, like, u to the power of 1 third squared, a power to a power gets multiplied. So that equals u to the power of 2 cubed. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, now this looks very familiar to this right here. It's one of NCEA's little tricks they do all the time uh, where they use the same problem over and over again. So this, in fact, factorizes, because they just did it in the first problem. This factorizes to x plus 4 bracket, what was it again? 2x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, right? So now I solve for x. I'm going to solve for x. So x can equal negative 4. Or x can equal, remember these are the roots of the equation, I guess. We could call that that here. 2x minus 1 equals 0. 2x minus 1 equals 0. So that means, running off the page here, hello. So that means x equals 1 half. x can equal negative 4 or x can equal 1 half. Okay, that's, that's great, but we don't want to find x. We want to find u. All right. So if x equals u to the power of 1 third, that means we could have uh, u to the power of 1 third can equal negative 4, which means that I would have to cube that in order to solve for u. u equals negative 4 cubed, and negative 4 cubed is negative 64. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure. Or u to the power of 1 third can equal 1 half in which case I'll cube it again. One half cube. cubed is the opposite of power of one third. Those are opposite operations there. And one half cubed is one half times one half times one half is one eighth. So these are my final answers here. So why was I covering that up that whole time? Sorry. Um, these are my final answers because I'm solving for u here. Very good problem. Okay, moving on. Let's see this next one. Talia used timber to form the exterior sides of a rectangular garden. The length of the garden is x meters, and its area is 50 square meters. Show that the perimeter of the garden is given by this expression. Okay, well, let's draw a pretty little picture here. All right, so the garden's got an area of 50 square meters. The length of that is x. Well, the, the length times the width must be 50. So that means this over here must be 50 over x, because uh, these must multiply to get the area, because it's a rectangle. And of course, that over there is 50 over x as well, because opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. Well, the, the perimeter is all the sides added up. So the perimeter is x plus x, x, these two sides, x plus x, plus these two sides, 50 over x plus 50 over x. 2, not 2, goodness, sorry about that, 50 over x. All right, so those are the four sides of the rectangle. Uh, these two sides give me 2x, of course. And when I'm adding fractions with the same denominators, I just add the numerators, and that's just 100 over x. All right, next one. If she uses 33 meters of timber to build the sides, all right, around there, find the dimensions of the garden. So what that means is that this expression of the perimeter must equal 33. So we're saying that the perimeter is 33. Okay, build the sides, perimeter. Now that means that 2x plus 100 over x gives me my perimeter, which is 33. All right, now at this point, 
I'm just kind of fooling around with this one. I'm just going to take that 2x and put it to the other side so I can get rid of that x on the bottom. I don't want x's on the bottom here. So I'll say uh, 100 over x equals 33 minus 2x. And now I'll just multiply that whole side by x to get rid of that denominator. So that's 100 equals x times 33 minus 2x. It looks like I'm going to get a quadratic here, and that's fine. All right, just pan out so I can see this problem up here as well. Uh, expand that out, like I said, 100 equals 33x minus 2x squared. And now I'll set this expression equal to 0 and solve for x. So I'll put that to the other side. That gives me positive 2x squared minus 33x plus 100 equals 0. And I can solve this a number of ways. I can solve this with the quadratic. I don't think it factorizes neatly. And I'm just going to, I just put it into the graphics and I got x equals 4 or 12.5. 12.5, okay, and again, we can do that with the graphics or quadratic formula. Where was my work and my working was? That's what it looks like with the quadratic formula, okay, and my dimensions can be, they can be 4 by 12.5, or I guess 12.5 by 4, same thing, same dimension, okay, there we go. Okay, now I realize I went through that one kind of quickly with solving a quadratic, but I've done that in other videos, and so right now, once I get to a quadratic, I'm just going to say, solve it. Okay, uh, on to the last problem, which is probably the hardest one, and I'm just going to go straight to the booklet here. Okay, check this one out. So we've got two people, David and Sioni, competing in a cycle race, which is this long. Sioni cycles on average four kilometers per hour faster than David and finishes half an hour earlier than David. Find David's average speed. Okay, first of all, let's let's get some facts here. Uh, average speed is total distance over total time. So David's, they both do 150 Ks, but I don't know the time, so I'm just going to call that T. Okay, uh, Sioni's is, uh, what is it, half an hour earlier, so that means Sioni's is 150 over T minus one half. Okay, t minus one half, and this is the same as four kilometers faster than David, d plus four. Okay, so now how I look at this problem is I set Sioni's time right here. I go okay, 150 over t minus one half. I guess you could use a decimal there if you wanted to. Equals David's time plus four. David's time plus four. 150 over plus 4. Now, just setting that equation up right there is hard enough. Okay, so I've got to solve for t, but I don't need t for the final answer. I need to find the average speed. Okay, so first of all, first of all I'm just going to clean this equation up here. I'm going to, I'm going to combine these two fractions. I'm going to multiply this 4 by t over t to combine these fractions. Okay, and when I do that, I get 150, nothing's happening on this side, t minus 1 half, and this is 150 plus 4t, remember when I'm adding fractions of the same denominator, they stay the same, it's not 2t, it's just, it's just t. Okay, now, since this is a proportion, I'm going to cross multiply and set them equal to each other, because with proportions, cross products are equal, so 150 times t, is 150t, so this times this equals this times this. That's really messy. Okay, so this one is 150 plus 4t times t minus 1 half. Did I forget to set them equal? Equal, hello, equal to each other. So when I do this, Let's not forget the equal sign this time. When I do this expansion here, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Okay, I'm still going to do the foil first, outside, inside, last. Um, 
the first is 150t. The outside 150 times negative 1 half is negative 75t. Inside product, 4t times t is positive 4t squared. And the last, 4t times negative 1 half is negative 2t, negative 2t. Okay, so looks like I've got a quadratic on my hands. I can, this, I can take those 150t's out real quick. That looks nice. And I think I'm going to set this equal to 0. Um, 0 equals 4t squared. I just found a mistake. Sorry about that. First outside, 150 times negative 1 half is negative 75. No t there. No t there. Sorry about that. So this is 4t squared minus 2t minus 75. Okay. So now I've got a quadratic on my hand here, and we can solve it a number of ways. Like I said earlier, I'm just going to solve this. It doesn't factorize. Uh, it comes out with um, t equals 4.587 or some negative number, I think, negative 4.0875. And of course, we're going to disregard the negative time value. You can't have a negative time there. And finally, to find David's average speed, I'm going to use this formula right here. David's average speed is 150 kilometers divided by 4.587 hours, hours, kilometers. And I get my answer of somewhere around 32.7 kilometers per hour. Okay, so pretty tough, pretty tough problem here, but once we get into this stage, it's, it's not too difficult. But setting up that equation right there was, was the tricky part. Okay, hope that helped. Thanks for watching.